Every day, fishermen from the far northeast of Scotland leave port for some of the cruelest seas in the world. Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now in Trollerman, a new generation of fishermen are about to make their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All to put fish on our plates. North Sea waters 50 miles off the Shetland Isles, skipper Charlie McBride and his son Charles are having their fishing trip from hell. First, they lost their most valuable net. You lost it! You just lost the fish! Then their main hydraulic pump failed. Now, just a week into the trip, there's still no fish in the hold. We're tying the night. Arcane has first to find and then retrieve our lost net. It's worth thousands, and Skipper Charlie can't afford to leave it on the seabed. It's a week since they lost it, but they've not given up. Ever ingenious, Charlie puts his faith in his fish finding radar. Here, this is the net here. It's still in the same area, and that's, uh, well, that's good news. This net is a, a very good fish net. We're very vexed to, I am certainly very vexed to lose it. But uh, it, it costs £6,000, but it's not just the value of the net, it's, it's a good fish net. Sometimes you get nets that don't fish as well as those, but this was a net that's been very good to us. They plan to pull the net up from 400 feet below with a grappling hook called a creeper. By towing the creeper along the seabed, they hope it will snag the stranded net. The moment the rope goes tight, they will try to heave the net back in. Sure enough, the rope starts to come under strain. The boat has slowed down, so there is a chance that we may have caught it. There's no possibility it may have just dug into the seabed, but we'll, uh, we'll, take the, uh, we'll take the rope and the creeper up and then we'll have a look at it. Charlie may be forced to abandon six thousand pounds worth of net. A hundred miles south of the Arcane lies Peterhead, the capital of Scotland's fishing industry. Just weeks before, disaster had struck for Jimmy Buchan, skipper of one of the fleet's most successful boats, Amity. This is just about the worst feeling a, a skipper could hear. Seeing your own boat coming back on the end of a tour. With Jimmy taking a rare trip off and a relief skipper at the helm, Amity's engine had blown up. Oh, boy, is it, Gavin? I'm no engineer, but I went out with a couple of big bangs. That's not a good thing. The engine was a write off. It's been a stressful two months for Jimmy. I've now got a boat tied to the pier with a crew aboard it waiting for, looking at me for answers, and they ain't getting it. 
In the meantime, first mate Kevin and his loyal crew were forced to find berths on other boats. And they liked what they found. Pretty good trip together. 1,400 boxes or something we've landed for the week, so it's just easier work. It's a lovely job to be at. Finally, 60,000 pounds worth of new engine arrived, and after a further two weeks of fitting, it fires into life. Two months ashore, but Jimmy and Amity are back in the game. Yee-haw! Look at that! To the right, old cowboy. There you go. It is good to the back. Eighty miles offshore, the weather is perfect for catching the prawns that Jimmy needs to pay for the engine and ensure the loyalty of his crew. Engine seems to be working extremely well. So all in all, so far I'm, I'm delighted with the situation. But we've just got to get some serious fishing done now. The crew shoot their two nets and will trawl through until they break. Dawn finds Amity trawling through the middle of the prawn fleet. Hello, boys! Hello! Hello, boys! Hello! No time for sleep and work to be done! Up! Bad rain on running now. Time to heave up and uh, see if we've done any good. tied up in port. These are the first prawns that Jimmy's seen. But is it the start that he's looking for? Not impressed. Two months off him. I must be getting rusty. The lack of prawns has also failed to impress the crew and first mate Kevin. Very poor holders. It's not what the gaffer was looking for. Off the Shetlands, the Arcane is still searching for her lost net. They're losing light, and the weather is closing in, but Charlie's undaunted. I have a cunning plan. The plan is to shoot both ropes as we would normally fishing, only instead of having the net in the middle of the ropes, we're going to have that creeper. We we'll think we'll stand a better chance of sweeping it in. We'll take it in a bigger area. That's the plan. Charlie's relying on 30 years fishing experience to get his net back. He shoots the arcane's gear as if she's catching fish. But instead of the net, he attaches the creeper. This way he hopes to scoop up a larger area of the seabed so that the creeper can get his hooks firmly into the elusive net. <laughs> Say. If she goes up the sun, pass the rope through it so we don't lose it. We'll have a hold of it. If it's going to come, it's going to come now. If it doesn't, it doesn't. She's there for eternity. You have to have patience, like, and just take it nice and county. Gently, gently, catch your monkey. You see it? Aye. Right. Oh, my God. A bird in the bag. I don't think it's... No, no, I don't know. I'll take a bird in the bag. I caught something. But is it the net? Don't, 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 don
from the bottom after a week lost at sea and miraculously it's undamaged the McBrides are back in action and on the hunt for haddock oh what a beautiful morning oh what a beautiful day morning has broken Skipper's touch. I just haven't been 100% fully really focused. Maybe on the job at times. The new thing is to step on doing it in the boat and begin to focus in on the fish and then just feel it. But just on the back bumper rather than on the front. Uh, very poor fish in here in the dark. Hardly worth shooting and hitting the dark for all we're getting. Where's all the prawns gone? With an anxious crew and a new engine to pay for, Jimmy decides to find his prawns through the old boy network. Are you in here, James? Come on. When the stress levels are high, senior skippers stick together. Not that first mate Kevin has much sympathy for the pressures of the wheelhouse. If he's got problems on his shoulders, it's not up to me to tell him what to do. I'm just paid from the shoulders down. He's paid from the shoulders up to tank, to do what he has to do, to get this boat full of prawns and get a pay for his lads and himself. had another two days of poor fishing. It's getting desperate for the McBrides. They're already in debt to the tune of nearly four hundred thousand pounds. Charlie's feeling the pressure. We just can't afford not to catch fish. We just have to get a trip. Every trip. This family business is in crisis. Just weeks previously, the McBrides were convicted for selling fish outside their permitted quota. This used to be common practice, but a crackdown from the authorities has made an example of the McBrides. They have six months to repay £400,000 or face prison. They're wanting all our assets. They're even wanting my son Charles, he left school at 16, 
and took out a pension plan. There's not many sensible young lads do that. They've been paying for 19 years, and they're wanting that as well. They're wanting their two houses. They're, they're, they're wanting the equity in the boat. They want the equity in all the business that we have. And we're having to remortgage everything back to the bank, and it's going to take us 10 to 15 years just to get back on our feet to get where we are here today. So six months to do that in, or go to prison for two and a half years. With barely any fish to show for nearly two weeks at sea, Charlie faces a desperate gamble if he's to make any inroads into their massive debts. We could steam close to the Peter Head because it's two days left in this trip, but the fish close to the Peter Head is smaller fish for less money. That would be the safe option. We're not doing the safe option. They decide to burn another day's fuel steaming 80 miles in the wrong direction across the North Sea to Norway. If she comes up with a good haul, there'll be very little said by our lot here or the rest of the crew. But she was up with nothing in her then. The guy has a way out as stupid as old Phil ever was. The pressure is also on in Amity's wheelhouse. Armed with the intelligence gleaned from other skippers, Jim has shifted fishing grounds too. But will that do anything to ease his anxiety over the lack of problems? Still not enough. Still not happy with the end result, so back to the drawing board. Let's see what we're going to do this day. I say it's going through a bit of a sticky patch at the moment. I think he's thinking that our gear is not fishing because the other boats are catching more of us. Stall just something just doesn't feel right yet. I hope he isn't down and groom because if he's down and groom, he put everybody else down and groom. And it's not the way to run a boat. How are you doing, boys? Uh, Jimmy, what's wrong? Ah, I'm in the dumps. I'm in the dull dumps. You're down in the dumps. I'll tell you what to do. You're on your ice cream to come out and have a crack with the lads. We'll put you in a good mood. I'd love to come out there, I say to you. Somebody's going to take the worry off there, Kevin. You're putting your crew in a bad, happy, unstable mind. Jimmy! Hello! Come here, come here, I'm talking to you. While Jimmy wrestles with his demons, Amity's problem seems small compared to those on the arcane. After a week of lost nets, smashed hydraulics and appalling weather, they're about to haul in for the first time in Norwegian waters. As Charlie's bold expedition across the North Sea paid off, Net is stuffed with plump attic. It's the best haul we've had this trip so far. They may have found the fish at last, but one good haul won't make their trip. Six hours, the crew walks straight through, and slowly boxes of fish begin to fill the hole. Charlie's gamble to steam to Norway has brought them the fish they need to complete the trip. This is the haul we've all been waiting for. The last one. Tip lower. Thank God. Time to go home. Go home. We're just down to be going home.
The crew have done all they can. But it's the price in the fish market that matters. Can the McBrides make any inroad into their debts? from Peterhead lies the rival port of Fraserborough. It's home to the youngest skipper in the prawn fleet, 23-year-old Chas Bruce. So I knew my spare time, as you can see, I'm very productive. I know this will fly in a pair of ladies, but it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> Chaz is readying himself for a week at sea, but when he's on shore, it's his mum, Marjorie, who's the skipper. Where's my hat? Where's your top? Camouflage. I don't care, and you're always asking my father your tops are. You just, I lay their clothes out all the time, and then they can never find them. Martin's bag will be always packed. This is always ready, waiting at the door, ready to go. But this one, this one's never, never got anything in his bag. Chaz's family have been fishing for three generations. His dad, Alistair, used to skipper the family boat, the New Dawn. But now Chaz shares her with his brother, Martin. Northerly gales have kept older skippers in port for over a week. But the weather doesn't intimidate the youngest crew in Fraserburgh. Chaz is the only skipper to go to sea. It'll be a week-long trip. The new dawn is less than 15 meters long and has a wooden hull. In a force-eight, nothing rolls quite like the smallest drawn trawler in the fleet. But Chaz is undeterred. He wants to try his hand at chicken stir fry. Feel like a ballerina. Steam, the new dawn is 80 miles from land. Chaz is desperate to shoot his nets. It's flattened out a bit just now. The bit of a rough stream there. The hail force ate most of the way, but. Oh. <laughs> Spoke too soon, I thought it flattened out. <laughs> On the Amity, Jimmy Buckin is still feeling the fishing isn't right. But is it him, or is it the boat? He arranges a rendezvous with another veteran skipper, George Runcy, of the Ocean Challenge. Jimmy's plan is to trawl alongside the other boat and compare the size of their hulls. An old skipper's trick. It's really the only way you can get a benchmark to see if you're fishing any better or any less. We've got the same engine, similar horsepower, known jobs for many, many years, so I know and trust him. He's telling me he's got 15 stone, will be 15 stone. Although, I'll double check later on just to make sure. They'll trawl as a pair through the evening and into the night. When both boats measure their hulls, they'll know if there's a real problem on the Amity, or whether it's just Jimmy being hard to please. 
The new dawn has found an area of the North Sea all to herself and is preparing for her first haul. Chaz and his young crew hope that the prawn gods will favour the young and the bold. But it's early days for the boys on the new dawn. On Amity, Jimmy's about to find out if 30 years of experience can get him back on the prawns. The ocean challenge falls first. It's a good size. Then it's the turn of Amity. Jimmy is about to find out if his problems are all in the mind. Stone. It appears we've got a, a few stone more than, than George here now. Patience, get a bit of luck, and keep smiling. The new Dawn and her young crew have decided to abandon their solo mission and to find where the more experienced skippers are fishing. They're not just the newest kids on the block, they're the smallest. Chaz follows the pack for four hours, but has he left it too late? Not much prawns today, Skipper. No prawns today. Off. The harsh pressures of the wheelhouse are getting to young Chaz. He's just got to find the prawns. I'm getting a little frustrated now, to be honest. I can't seem to get my hands on them, but I've kept five men out to see. They'll be needing a pay, so I have to find them. I've no option. <laughs> Hopefully young blood will triumph in the end. Next time on Trollerman. Jimmy recovers his sense of humor until disaster strikes in the engine room. Say there's a fire in the engine room! The new dawn catches more than just prawns. Still dangerous, Vince slips out of place, we be left idle in the middle of the sea. And we brave the Atlantic storms in the hunt for massive monkfish. Activate, guys! <laughs> Tragically, since filming was completed, the new dawn has lost one of her crew. Ronaldo Benitez, who was 29 and a father of two, was swept overboard in heavy seas at night. The New Dawn skipper, Chaz Bruce, risked his own life by diving into the...